Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. Well, I've been thinking a lot, as a lot of us have in this past week, about the events of uh, what's happening in the Holy Land. And I just want to add a few thoughts, uh, if you might, uh, to this whole thing. And of course, the violence that's happened is just outrageous and horrible. The innocents uh, that have been murdered and slaughtered and kidnapped. I mean, it goes on and on and on. I just, it's horrible. But I want to step back a bit before I want to share a little more about that. But I want to step back, step, step back a bit and reflect on first my, my time at the Oregon Star Party. Like, why in the world am I even interested in astronomy? Now, yes, there's science behind it. But for me, there's also beauty. When I take images and look through this, my telescope through my camera, because it's not your normal telescope, but when I look at the image that are made, images made by the telescope, I'm in awe. I mean, ah, the immensity, the power, the beauty that God has created. And, I'm, and I always ask myself, I think, gosh, Lord, it's so far away. It's so immensely beautiful. And you created all this. Well, so after the Oregon Star Party, then I have a common tradition, if possible, to go see a good friend in uh, the Baker Diocese, which would be the bishop of the Baker Diocese, Bishop Liam Carey. And there we had dinner and we had a discussion. And he's a very philosophical philosophical kind of man, uh, obviously a very religious and pious man. And and with uh, our dinner, we had a discussion about astronomy and faith, which, I mean, that's great because I love that. But he said something that was very, well, surprising to me. Well, I take images of things like, you know, galaxies and nebulas. Uh, he has placed in his sacristy, when he vests, not a religious image per se, but an image of what's called Stefan's Quintet. A set of galaxies, a group of actually appears to be five galaxies, but it's four mostly close together with the one that's, uh, you know, close to us. Of course, these galaxies are all just immensely far away. And you might remember, these are the same galaxies that, if you ever watch It's a Wonderful Life, you know, that Christmas special, and there's these galaxies talking to each other. Those are the galaxies. And a lot of science has been done around them. But okay, I diverge. Back to the point. They are immense and they're beautiful. So when he gathers, or when he gathers his um, vestments and he's going to put them on, he looks at this image and basically says something like this to himself, that, Lord, you've made all of this. You are the author of all this amazing, you know, beauty, immensity, etc. And that same God, you, O oh Lord, are going to be with me as he puts his vestments on here at this Mass. So he's the God of big things. He's, he's the God of small things. He's the God that is transcendent. Think about these stars and galaxies. And he's imminent. In other words, he's close to us. Uh, there's not really any space in our, our sacristy, but kind of such an image. But I have one in my, my house here, actually. And I'm going to turn the camera around where, so you can see that. Let's see if I can change the camera here. Uh, and it's next to my telescope. I put the telescope away. But this is the image. This is called Stefan's Quintet. This image, a little closer because I got this. This image is a set of galaxies Bishop Liam has in his sacristy. For me, I have the, in my, my space here, this is the back of the house where I do my praying. And there's other things, of course, I do in this room. But every morning I get up and I sit in one of these chairs here and I spend some time praying and just listening, maybe have some petitions, etc. But it's a time for me to reflect on what is going to be going on this day and, and asking God, okay, Lord, help me to do what you want me to do. Be the priest you need me to be. But then sometimes I'll gaze at this image myself. I want to bring that now to the conflict that's gone on in the Holy Land to remind ourselves that God is imminent. He's close to us. And while that the war may be far away, we still can do something. Now, I want to read something from the Pope before I offer some ideas here. But the Pope really makes it clear, Pope Francis, that violence does not lead to peace. And while Israel has, or any group has, a right to defend itself from attack, that how you do that also matters. There's limits in proportion and in means. And I'm not going to get into that here today. But... He writes this, he says that terrorism and extremism do not help, each, help to reach a solution to the conflict between the Israelis and the Palestinians. 
but feel hatred, violence, and revenge, causing suffering to both sides. So what can we do? Obviously, the surprise attack is not justified. We need to be careful also about doing scorched earth approaches back. We support uh, all those who are innocent victims. We need to pray for all those who are innocent victims. And there are many, thousands. And again, this uh, act of terrorism and the act of war is not something that just is going to is isolated. It can it can expand because there's so many allies. We are an ally of Israel, right? Hamas has allies with some people in uh, Iran. We need to be aware that this is not going to just go away because we hope it goes away. But we need to be active in a very potent thing to do, and that is prayer. Prayer isn't like, oh gosh, at least we can pray. I mean, I've even said that, but really prayer is powerful. I would like to invite you, this coming week on the 17th, the bishops in the Holy Land have asked us, and the U.S. bishops also uh, recognize this as well, that on the 17th, we're being asked to consider a day of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving for the Holy Land. I'd like to encourage you to come to or go to your church and if they have an adoration chapel, we have one, to spend some time, an hour, 30 minutes, even 15 minutes, whatever it would be, five minutes, to spend some time in our adoration chapel before the Blessed Sacrament, recognizing that Jesus also knew what violence was like. A great act of terrorism was imposed upon him. And he did so willingly for us so that we could know peace in our hearts, so that we could know and be people that are called to love, not hate. And we, and I am especially one of those, have no skills that uh, trying to solve this is not even in my spheres of influence as it is on any of ours in the um, uh, political realm. But on the spiritual realm, oh yeah, we do. And so pray. Fasting, by the way, is not a complete abstinence of everything. It's a reduction of something. So maybe don't have a dinner or don't have a lunch or don't have a breakfast. That's a minimal thing that I might recommend. One of those, choose one. But do it with the purpose is as I suffer in hunger, there are people in the Holy Land on both sides that are now suffering and hungry. People are sorrowful and sad and have lost loved ones. Maybe you have somebody that you knew that was there and has been, been killed by the, the violence that's gone on. Pope Francis says, The Middle East does not need war but peace, a peace built on justice and dialogue and the courage of fraternity. For us, I want to encourage us to have the, the audacity to pray for a direct divine intervention to stop the violence and so that reconciliation can possibly occur. More than just peace, more than just disarmament or a cessation of violence, which is all very important to have, but even more, a reconciliation. Yes, the history between these two groups of people have been tenuous for many years and they go back into their their history with it. They will claim of the course of the uh, ancient thousands of years of anger and hatred between them. But it's got to stop. And where does it need to stop? With us, personally. We can do that. Maybe there's somebody in your life who you don't like or have a hatred for. Someone who's harmed you. Someone that you wish violence against. This would be a great thing to abstain from and ask God to help you. That is not to hate but to love this person, to pray for them, wish them well. Wish them a change of heart, but also ourselves. That's the kind of stuff we need to pray for. First in ourselves, and then pray for things beyond us. Prayer is powerful, friends. I want to encourage you to do it again on the 17th of this coming week, October 17th. Come to the Day Chapel 
at least for our parishioners at Holy Trinity, and maybe your, your parish, you have a, a chapel for prayer, an adoration chapel, and spend some time, any time. Our, in our case, ours is 24-7, and pray for peace, pray for reconciliation, and pray that any hatred in our own hearts or desire for violence will be removed by God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you all, and I'll see you this weekend. Bye-bye.